Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Episode 4 of The Wheel of Time Season 1, The Dragon Reborn, was an action-packed episode, so let's get on with the video. At number 5, I have the cold open to this episode, which serves as the introduction to Loghain. We saw Loghain at the end of the last episode, and here we learn who he is. Loghain is a male channeler that has proclaimed himself the Dragon Reborn. And here we see him and his army defeating the King of Gildan, and Loghain ends up recruiting him to his cause. When Loghain channels, there's a black weave around his original weave, and I think this is how they're going to portray the corruption of the One Power. Loghain also hears voices, and they tell him what to do, but when the voices tell him to kill the King of Gildan, he doesn't listen to them, he recruits him instead. This tells us that at this point, Loghain is not completely insane. In the book, we only hear about Loghain's war in Gildan. We never actually see it. If I remember correctly, in the entire book, we only see him in one scene. But I'm glad that here in the show, we actually see him defeating the King of Gildan. The way the madness and the corruption is portrayed is really good. And I'm glad Loghain is being used as the character that introduces us to these things. At number 4, I have Tom's story about his nephew Owen. Tom, Matt, and Rand arrive at a farm where they are hosted by a very nice family. Matt begins to act weird, and Tom says that he recognizes Matt's symptoms. He tells Rand the story of how his nephew Owen died. Owen was a normal boy who suddenly began to act weird and became very paranoid, and then one day he threw a rock without the use of his hands. Owen was a male channeler and he was gentled, aka cut off from the One Power, by the Aes Sedai of the Red Aja. After being gentled, Owen was never the same and then one day he killed himself. This story tells us what normally awaits male channelers and if Tom is correct, what awaits Matt. And speaking of Matt Cawthon, let's go to my number 3. At number 3, I have Matt being sick. So Matt in this episode is weird. He is physically sick and we see him throwing up but he also hears voices. But this only happens when this black mist shows up around him. This mist looks like the evil entity from Shadow Logoth. And after this episode, we know for sure that Matt did take the dagger from the cursed city. So these two things might be related. Later in the episode, Rand wakes up from another nightmare where he is visited by Mr. Fire Eyes. When he wakes up, he finds that Matt is missing and so Tom and him go out looking for him. They find the family hosting them dead and Matt is right next to them holding the Shadow Logos dagger. I honestly thought at this moment that Matt had killed them, but then Matt, looking very weird, points up with the Shadow Logos dagger and says, I see you. A fate shows up and it goes after them, but our favorite gleeman, Tom Marilyn, steps up and defends them. Rand and Matt escape, but Tom stays behind to fight off the fate. I'm very curious to learn what was going on with Matt in this scene, because when we see his face, he looks crazy, and he knows exactly where the fate is hiding. Also, the Shadow Logoth mist keeps coming out of his mouth. I'm not even sure if it is the Shadow Logoth mist, but that's what I'm thinking. This doesn't happen in the book, so I'm very curious. For number 2, I put Loghain escaping. So just as his army arrives to rescue him, Loghain escapes his cage and unleashes his power. Loghain seems very confident and he easily takes down Leandrin and Karini. His army arrives and they attack the Aes Sedai in waters. And here we see an Aes Sedai battle at a bigger scale, well at, at least compared to the Trolloc attack in the two rivers. Moiraine then confronts Loghain and asks him why she should believe that he is the Dragon Reborn. And honestly, his answer is kinda weak. He says that the whispers that he hears when he channels are the whispers of a thousand dragons that have come before him and that they are teaching him how to do better. But Moraine tells him that those are the whispers of madness, which is the obvious response. Did he think he was going to convince her after saying that? He should have definitely lied, especially when trying to convince an Aes Sedai. We then see Moraine, Leandrin, and Karini retaliate against him and they try to shield him but Loghain kills Karini in the process. Her warder, who is fighting Loghain's army, 
feels her death and goes into a rage. When he sees Karini dead, he attacks Loghain with his two axes, and Loghain uses this as an opportunity. When the axes penetrate the shield, Loghain manages to break them into what looks like hundreds of pieces, and this does a lot of damage. The pieces go everywhere, and a handle from one of the axes ends up on Moraine's side. But even worse, a piece of steel strikes Lan on the throat, and at this point, I had no idea where the show was going, because every Loghain moment is all new. None of this happens in the book. Nynaeve enters the room, and this takes my number one spot. The number one spot goes to Nynaeve, obviously. When Nynaeve enters the room, she sees Lan dying on the floor, and she cannot allow this to happen. So she unleashes her power, and besides healing Lan, it looks like she also heals everyone else in the room, I'm pretty sure. This weave will definitely come in handy in the future. This moment is probably my favorite moment in the entire season so far. Seeing Nynaeve unleash her power this early on in the show is shocking to me. But if you know her character, this makes a lot of sense. Everyone in the room is shocked by Nynaeve's power, even Loghain. With the Aes Sedai now healed, they link with Leandrin and together they manage to overtake Loghain and they gentle him. Seeing Loghain crying after being gentled was kinda sad honestly especially because it reminded me of Tom's story early on in the episode. Thanks to Tom's story, we have an idea as to what happens when male channelers are cut off from the One Power. And now that the Aes Sedai know that Nynaeve can channel, they're definitely going to take a big interest in her. Overall, this episode was really good. The weakest plotline, in my opinion, was definitely Perrin and Ewain's. But there was nothing wrong with it, it's just that compared to the other plotlines, it's the weakest in this episode. But I'm sure that it's going to change very soon. I'm very interested to see what is going on with Matt, because the way he was acting when he spotted the Fade was very creepy but interesting. This is handled very differently in the book, so it's kinda new to book readers. And then we have Nynaeve. Two episodes in a row where Nynaeve is just amazing. Zoe Robbins, the actress playing Nynaeve, has a big future ahead of herself. And that is it for the video everyone. I wish you a very good day or night. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.